speakers for sticking to your schedule. Javier Parrilla asks us the following question. For Alejandro, I'd imagine, the, looking at the economic cost for town administrations, when we look at the new model, uh, do we cost this per capita? How do we calculate it? <coughs> So, to repeat, Javier Barria asks about the financial cost for local councils uh, in this new model that you, you showed us. Is it going to be cost per capita? How do you calculate it? Okay, we might have a combined model uh, whereby each user of the waste management system decides the cost as soon as we have information on the amount of waste that's being generated by each council uh, or data on the users, we can then allocate a direct cost to the user for the waste that they generate, the waste that they deposit in each of the containers. Uh, if they separate all their waste and they don't use the large volume waste containers, then obviously there can be a sustainable content in our cost consideration. Mm, so this will help us work towards our zero waste objectives. Um, so if people do just throw mass waste away without sorting, then obviously they're going to generate more costs. So we need to look at and break it down by families, how they contribute to the waste management system. Fernando Leon asks about uh, rising costs in recycling for the new model. Yes, new model is a complement. As soon as we cease to pay for waste management, we are going to start producing and generating waste correctly because we're going to start sorting, we're going to start depositing in the right containers. And obviously, if we have a, a taxing system, then this would favor the introduction of a reasonable system. So, and obviously, if we're going to sanction or penalize people for poorly uh, sorting their waste, then I think that this is a good measure because it's a cost that shouldn't necessarily be shared amongst the general population. So pay as you throw is a good approach. Yeah, I think that cost perhaps should bear this in mind. We should think about how people produce waste and how they sort this waste. Perhaps we could look at Germany as a benchmark for us. Their model is perhaps something that we could apply here. In Germany, in the major cities, a lot of people don't have the discipline to do this. Apart from the fact that 20% of the population in general doesn't have any kind of discipline. So in some rural areas, for instance, where we have l less population, there's stronger social control and there's better discipline. But in cities, it's not quite so good. And here on the Canary Islands, there are some 13 million tourists a year. And each one will stay for two or three weeks. So you're talking about half a million people. And obviously, they want holidays. They don't want to have to worry about sticking to rules. So the problem here, too, is how can we live with less disciplined people or people with less information and how can we adapt the, the technical selection process to this problem? It's not an easy task, but there are solutions, obviously. This is, this is a question for Andrea with regard to the biomass uh, waste. Is it better to uh, use it as charcoal for the soil, carbon for the soil or fuel? I... <laughs> There's not one single waste stream. Now, most processes are quite simple, per se. Mm, we 
could end up making fertilizer, which could then once again add to the soil. So it's a, it's a circular process and every individual part has its own value. Obviously, some elements have a greater value than others, but it's, a, it's a part of a whole. Okay, next question. Are you going to set up the third level of uh, clean spots for our citizens? We always have a series of mini clean spots using different models. This is understood as it's the bringing the clean spot closer to the people. All of this has been fully certified in order to put it closer on the streets, but close to where the waste is generated. So if there's easy access, people can have vehicle access to it, or we've put them in, in areas that are our poles of attraction, such as schools. And the, way, the reason we're doing this is not just so that people have their clean areas or spots to sort their rubbish, but also to provide infrastructure where they don't have the capacity. They don't have all the kind of waste that you'd have, but there will be access to this apart from what we can put in the curbside containers. But we have several uh, mini clean spots that are ready that we can roll out at specific places where a lot of people congregate. And on this trip, they can, if they're taking their kids to school, for instance, at the same time, they can get rid of their waste and put them in the curbside containers. It's now 11 o'clock, so we've, we do. We're finished on time. It's now time for a coffee break. I'd like to thank you very much. And I would like, I'm highly grateful for the fact that you've stuck to the time. I'm sure the organizers will be grateful for that. And anybody who has further questions, here we ha they will be around for the coffee break to take any questions you may have. Thank you very much.